Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about virtualization. So uh, for discussing virtualization, let's see if for example we have a computer or we have a server machine. So with that server machine or with that computer we have these hardware resources like we have RAM, CPU, hard disk or network interface cards. So these are the computing resources we have with our computer. And on top of those, uh, those uh, hardware resources, we have an operating system because if you don't have operating system, we will not be able to utilize these hardware resources which we have on the computer. So we need an operating system to interact with those hardware uh, components. And then on the top of that operating system, we install the application programs which we need. Maybe Mac, MS Office, maybe Cisco Packet Tracer, Splunk, or WebEx. So we install those uh, application programs on, on the top of operating system. Now the modern computers, these days computers, even in the laptops, we have multiple cores in a single CPU chip. So what happens, maybe we have a single CPU chip, but in that chip we can have multiple cores there. So multiple cores means multiple processors are there. And each core can run multiple threads using a technology that is known as multi-threading. So it means each core can run multiple threads. So like this core, maybe four threads. So for example, if we have, if we have maybe eight cores, then the same single CPU chip with the help of multi-thread, multi-threading can execute 16 different programs simultaneously or concurrently. So it means nowadays we have more cores in a single CPU and by using multiple or multi-threading, we can execute multiple programs at the same time. So look at the capability of modern CPU chips. Now each available thread can be treated separately, separately as a virtual CPU. So within a physical CPU chip, we have different cores and every core is actually having multiple threads. So every thread, we can say that every thread can be considered or can be treated as a virtual CPU. Okay. Now, Virtualization. So virtualization is a process of creating software-based computers. So software-based computers we create using this uh, trick or this technology that's virtualization. And now those software-based computers are known as virtual machines. So now these virtual machines will be given those virtual CPUs we discussed, which are from threads. So those virtual CPUs will be given to those virtual computers, which we, which we call as virtual machines. And now those all virtual machines will have their own physical hardware. They will have their own CPU, RAM, hard disk, and maybe network interface cards. So every virtual machine will have the, these all resources of their own. So for example, we have this computer and this computer has these resources, these physical resources, NIC, hard disk, GPU, RAM, everything. Now, with the help of virtualization, we can create multiple virtual machines with the help of these physical resources. So these physical resources, for example, we discussed that CPU can have multiple uh, cores and cores can run multiple threads. So now with the help of that, we can create multiple virtual machines or, or, or we can say the software based computers and every computer will have their own CPU, RAM and hard disk. But in the end, they all will be sharing the resources, the physical resources of some physical computer. Now this all process or this all uh, the virtualization method to create virtual machines is made possible by using a software, a piece of software, that software is known as hypervisor. So this is hypervisor we used to create these virtual machine. And for illustration, you see, we have shown that this is the hypervisor and this hypervisor 
helps us to create multiple virtual machines. And now once we have these virtual machines and, and yes, one more thing, just let me clear this one. So this hypervisor is also known as virtual machine manager. Now this virtual machine manager actually manages the physical resources allocated to virtual machines. So we have these physical resources on the bottom. You can see we have these, these are the physical resources. Now out of this physical resources, how much resources we need to give to the first virtual machine, maybe to the second virtual machine. So these all things have to be managed by the hypervisor. Now, once we have these virtual machines, we can install any operating system on those virtual machines. For example, if, if this is my desktop computer, if I say, if I this my desktop computer, I can, or maybe this is server, for instance, if this is a server machine, we can install multiple operating systems in that uh, by using this virtualization uh, technology using hypervisor. So for example, in one virtual machine, we can install Windows Server, maybe some other server or Linux or like Unix Server. In this way, we can install different uh, operating system and on each operating system, we can actually install multiple or different application programs. Like we have this one. So this one you can see, we can have different applications here. We can get different applications or we can have same application, but in the end, they all are actually different virtual computers. Maybe we can say a copy of the, of this one, but of course they will be sharing the same physical resources which we have on a physical computer. Now there are hypervisors. So we discussed the hypervisor is a piece of software which helps us in creating virtual machines. Now we have uh, different types of hypervisors, type one hypervisor and type two hypervisor. So in type one hypervisor, for example, we have this server machine there and we want to create virtual machines there. So if you are using type one hypervisor, then that hypervisor will be installed on the physical hardware. So you see, this is the physical hardware and on top of that hardware, we have installed this software, that hypervisor. And uh, this type one hypervisor is also known as bare metal hypervisor. So second name for that. But the important thing is that hypervisor is, is installed on the top of this physical hardware and then on top of that hypervisor, we can have different virtual machines like we can have, you can see here, we have different virtual machines and on each virtual machine, we can install different operating system and on each operating system, we can have different application program, which we like. So maybe we can have MS Office, maybe. So we can have MS Office on all of them. Maybe some of them are using MS Office and maybe some of them have Cisco Packet Tracer installed there. So these all are different virtual machines. Now, some of the examples in the market to create type one hypervisors are from VMware, vSphere, or ESXi, from Microsoft, we have Hyper-V, or we have open source KVM. So these are some of the examples in the market which we can use to create virtual machines. Now we have also the type two hypervisor so in this two uh, type two hyper hypervisor, so this is very much uh, common in in um, with the with the end user, for example. So for example, at my home also I have this virtual machine. For example, what I have done? I have a laptop. So in this case, for example, we have a computer. We have the physical hardware resources, and on top of that, we have an operating system. For example, if we have one Windows ten. So I have some maybe 100 GB hard disk, maybe 16 GB RAM and I have one network interface card and I have Windows 10. And now I want to create multiple virtual machines on my laptop. Then what I need, I need again a piece of software that is known as hypervisor. So in this case, in type two hypervisor, actually these hypervisors are installed on the operating system. So now hypervisor installed on the operating system. But before that, if you see 
in, in, in that one. If you see hypervisor, we didn't have any operating system. Hypervisor was installed on the top of the physical hardware. But in this case, we have physical hardware, then we have operating system. And on top of that operating system, we have the hypervisor. And once we have hypervisor, we can create multiple virtual machines. For example, in this case, we have some multiple virtual machines and every virtual machine can have different maybe operating system and maybe in operating system, maybe instead of writing here, I can say that every operating system can have different application programs there. So maybe I can have Cisco Packet Tracer on all, on all of them. Maybe we have some Splunk software on some of the machines. So now every virtual machine will be, com will be considered as a standalone software-based computer and we can, and they, and, and we can uh, consider them separately to install different things. Now some rel relevant terminology here. So here, this computer on which I'm going to install the hypervisor software. So that computer is known as host computer. And then the operating system which I have on my computer where I'm installing hypervisor. So that operating system, original operating system will be known as host operating system. And once I have installed hypervisor and I have created virtual machines and on those virtual machines, if I'm going to install some of the operating systems, then that operating system is, will be known as guest operating system. This is a guest operating system, this is the host operating system, and this is the host computer or the host machine there. And some of the examples which are available in the market by which we can actually create virtual machines on our computer. So we have this virtual box, this is free, we can use it and it's good to practice. Uh, maybe if you want to learn maybe Kali Linux, so we can install some Kali here, we can install some windows here and then we can perform some labs or we can learn something. In addition, we also have this VMware workstation so we can use uh, these uh, hypervisor software to create virtual machines on our own computers. So this was a bit introduction about virtualizations and, and about hypervisor. I hope this discussion was a bit helpful for you. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. I hope to see you in some other video. Thank you.